Hello and welcome to the Big Bank Theory Podcast. My name's John. I'm here with my friend and colleague, Dan. Hello. Welcome back, everyone. It's been a while. It's been a while, Dan. Yeah, we had a sabbatical. So we've had a sabbatical. You've been uh, studying the ancient philosophers. Yeah, big I. time. I.e. Big time. Aristotle. Good. Uh, Plato. Yeah. All the big ones. Socrates. Socrates was in there. Yeah. He is so great. I was looking at statues. I was gazing upon marble. Yeah. I was swimming in the Ionian Ocean. Lovely. One of them's true. Yeah, okay. Uh, there is a lot of marble, so actually two of them are true. I was just here getting progressively colder. Yeah, well, I've returned to very much autumn. You have. Um, you have. And You're wearing an autumnal jumper. I am, yeah. Um, it's yeah. got a, if you can't see it, listeners, which you can't, it's a knitted jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> it is not. <laughs> no, it's a nice stripey effect. I quite often make the mistake of wearing a jumper with nothing underneath it and then yeah. it's too hot. And I don't know why I always do it every year. It's I'd never do that. It's a stupid thing to do, isn't it? I mean, I would say so. Well, you know. So when you see a man I walking around town with a woolly jumper tied around his waist and no shirt on, that's Dan. Yeah, may well be. Okay, so let's get down to it. We've got a lot to talk about. It's all been happening while you've been abroad. Yeah. Uh, should we start? Uh, at the ironically enough, the one I the the match I've watched the least of is the one last night that I was very much in England for. Oh yeah, but just um, I, it's yeah. I actually we'll get to it, but it's the first time in I don't know how long years mm. that I've not listened or what listened to or watched the Exeter City match because of last night. Yeah, all oh, right. Because I was busy working, um, but you know whatever. I've still I was still across it, and I've, I've still got plenty of. Um, hot takes okay, uh, good. which I'll say with the confidence of someone who watched every second good love it uh, it's the way we like to play it well no one's ever picked us up on it have they so. <laughs> not so far um, well Stevenage was first and I was there for that one uh, at home crappy lunchtime kickoff. Uh so bad in fact that Colwell had to slam Sky Sports mm. afterwards because there was only 5,000 something people there yeah in, and it was about 80 from Stevenage, is that right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, that's, I don't know if that's the actual number, that's what it looked like right, to me. Right, oh, okay. We, so I could go hog wild on this argument, if we, <laughs> but I don't think we've got time. No, we um, haven't. Hog wild, excellent. It's, it's mad, isn't it? Yeah. Basically, in it, just very quickly, these people, they always say this about everything. They say this about the getting rid of the three o'clock blackout. They say this about... Any time there's any kind of change to the schedule. No, it'd be fine. People will still go. No, they won't. Any excuse for anyone to not do anything. Yeah. That's the view that people should have. You need to underestimate everybody in the world. Mm. You know, you need to underestimate. You think, oh, no, they're really loyal. No, they're not. Mm. What? There's so many factors. People are skin. Yeah. They might have a big family. You think... Instead of taking them all up the football this week, we'd all just watch it at home. Yeah. We've already got Sky, kind of, you know, save a load of money. It's early. People build their lives around three o'clock football, so they maybe have other commitments that they're doing there. It's um, it's a con yeah. when people say that, you know. Well, yeah, so the attendance was uh, much lower than you'd normally expect for a 3 p.m. Saturday. Stevens never bring loads, but inevitably an early kickoff means... Harder for them to get here, like we've all said. They of can course, watch there's on the that telly, too. Yeah, all they, that stuff. Yeah. So uh, it didn't affect the players, but it did affect the atmosphere. Uh, the city, honestly, were excellent. Yeah, that some. I mean, that was a hell of a display. Yeah, I've heard some people saying, "Oh, Stevenage weren't any good," but actually, all their other results suggest they are. I think we just outplayed them. Yeah, yeah, they weren't particularly great on the day, I don't think. I mean, that's, I think both things can be true, but it's not like they're a terrible team. No, no. We were like, oh, they're the ones going down this year, and we were just like, you know, we didn't need to do much. We just played brilliantly yeah. in that match. Um, you can kind of mention anybody, really, can't you? I mean, I mean, the obvious ones, I'd say, would be Woods. Yep. Ed Francis was excellent. He came on, didn't he, yeah. because of an early injury to Aitchison. That's right. Um, I think Colwell said he wanted to go with a bit more pace, which makes sense. But I think, you know, leave out the skinny little baldric haircutted um, <laughs> Ed Francis at your own peril because um, he's a little dancer. 
Well, he was... No, yeah, he didn't... He started the game, didn't he, Francis? But he... What game am I thinking of then? That HSN came, was that the one after? That was Wigan. But, oh, right. but it, w- this was him coming back into the team. Um, yeah, of course. Off yeah, the yeah. back of that free kick he scored in the other one. Yeah, so it was the ninth minute. We, I mean, we'd had lots of pressure already. And the ball's kind of bouncing around in the box. And he does a kind of... I couldn't see it from the big bank. But on the replay, he... It's not an overhead kick, but he's falling backwards and he hooks it behind him. Yeah. Basically on the goal line, isn't he? Or just in front of the keeper. And, yeah, uh, it's sort of a, a, a backwards goal, isn't it? It's a backwards goal. Um, inspired by... What was that? What's that actor called? Tom Green. Remember him? Completely disappeared, hasn't he, from view? Tom Green, the comedian. Yeah, yeah. And he did that film, Freddie Got Fingered. Yeah. Familiar with it? Very much so. Yeah. Backwards man, the backwards man, I can go backwards faster than you can. Yeah, I was actually going to reference that. I can't remember where it was from. Was it from Tom Green, was it? <laughs> yeah, Freddie Got Fingered. Uh, ridiculous film. Don't watch it with your children or your nan, but uh, it's full of excellent quotable yeah. lines. Has he got cancelled or something? Like, well, that's I really, don't know. I don't know. He's long gone. My favourite other line from that film is, uh, Daddy, would you like some sausages? Yes. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, which I often say around the house. I say both of those things around the house all the time. Yeah. My wife's delighted. There you go. Ne- never Ed watched Francis. it. Ed Francis almost certainly doesn't even know who Tom Green is, even though he kind of looks, looks like a little him. Bit like he does him. look a bit like him, yeah. 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 Anyway, um, so that was 1 0. And uh, Stevenage had a couple of shots from distance, I think a header from distance. We didn't look in any danger. No. I thought well, we just need this second goal here. Didn't come for a bit. Um, you know, like, and this is. This could be a potential trend with City, like get the first goal, don't get the second goal. But we kept dominating. Well, last season we didn't score many goals. No, that's true, isn't um, it? And obviously it's, it's a little bit, it's a very different team. Yeah. Um, and, but we got the second goal. We, you know, we killed, the, we killed the game off and it was a, you know, a comfortable 2-0, which is like you know, exactly right for the way the game went. We could have probably had, um, on the balance of play, could probably... It, a 3 0 would have been justified. Yes, that's right, you know, like... absolutely. So it was a lovely. This was cold, well, cold ball at its best. Yeah. One touch passing from the halfway line. Niskanen, Doyle, Sweeney, I think. Bosh, 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 bosh. Before you know it, it's in the box. You think Doyle's taken it too far, and he absolutely smashes it's, it's it. It's an absolutely beautiful little touch. Yeah. He has maybe two little touches. It's so quick, it's hard to even tell. Yeah. And then it's a kind of tight angle and he just smashes it. like Above the, the keeper. keeper's yeah, head. Yeah, yeah. At an angle you'd think yeah. was implausible. And I thought the I thought the week before, Doyle struggled to get into the game a little bit. Yeah. But in this, this one, he was superb. Yeah, and yeah. I think, you know, like we said many times, that's the way of it. We're in a way with young lone players. They're going to kind of like, you know, every game's a different challenge and some of them they're going to be suited to and some of them they're yep. not. And this one was perfect for him. Absolutely. Um, so at 2-0, you're then thinking, we can go on and, yeah, like you said. Sweeney had more. about 15 shots from distance. I mean, he had a very good game, but I think he was, it was his 30th birthday around this time, right? And mm-hmm. there was some, um, they said they were trying to get him a goal. And I think all of his mates from Ireland were there. Yeah, they were all there. Uh, Daniel O'Donnell. Yeah. Uh, Enya. Jerry R. <laughs> uh, yeah, they were all there. Father Ted. Yeah. He died. Uh, Father Jack. Father Jack. Ironically, the one that's still alive. Is that right? Yeah. Well, the other one, um, Dougal's still alive. Oh, yeah, alive, he's about 20, isn't he? Yeah. Um, anyway, it uh, was a lovely, lovely game of football. And it was a, such a shame there weren't 3,000 more people there to see it because it really deserved it. Yeah. Um, it's unfair to say there was no atmosphere, but inevitably, when you've got 3,000 less people, 2,500. Yeah, and they've only just got out of bed. And they've only just got out of bed. You know... Well, you know, we must we must bow down to our masters at well, Sky Sports. Obviously, the thing is, I get I know that you got well we get money for that, but we get the money we get from 3,000 more people through the gates is definitely going to be better than what Sky are paying us for an individual game. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. I, I really don't know. It, it might not be because they it's worth millions, isn't it this deal? It's such a shame though. What's the point of having millions if well, exactly. It's a different I mean, thing. exactly, yeah. Um, I suppose what we have to do, by we, I mean support all lower league supporters, is find ways around it. And it's so annoying because we've, this thing's existed for 120 years and 
we've created this wonderful thing. I'm talking about we, I just mean like the people of England. Yeah. And now we're going to have to work out new ways to make it good in spite of this annoying stuff. You know, like how many steps away are we from playing in front of a green screen? It's just so annoying. Well, it's very difficult as well because you can't, you can't kind of rely on people. Do you mean? Like, I know there's a lot of people that think that way and will go to the games no matter what, but you can't really kind of rely on the average person, especially when you uh, you face them with a kind of like a cheaper option. Because mm. I don't even really blame people for if it's that, if it's, if it's like that, because I don't know. I don't know what you do. What I would say is if um, it, under no circumstances pay Sky Sports directly any money that's what i would say yeah you probably do and i do occasionally as well actually but i would say don't do, pay them any money watch all the ma- football matches you want to illegally if you don't know how to do it ask someone younger they do know how to do it do it as illegally as you possibly can it's wow. very simple yeah do not pay them it of course they clamp down on those things don't they and i suppose that's no the... they don't they sent one person to jail person, it's not it? going to be you you know that <laughs> don't worry I'm about it it's going to be me I, like, no i don't mean you i mean it. you the yeah, listener yeah. don't worry about that um it won't be that bloke from pirate bay whatever he was called captain yeah. what was his name they, they just kind of token arrest one person yeah, in yeah. like every once every 10 years like there's loads of ways to do it don't pay them steal Directly from Sky. Yes. My it's other, the only way to do anything about that. The other thing I was talking about as well was how we respond as supporters, given that this won't change for five years. No, what I'm saying doesn't really answer the question of getting people to come to the games. Or, just and as, getting the atmosphere a, yeah, to be yeah. what it should be. I think as a side note, just you don't pay for Sky Sports. <laughs> Agreed. Um, okay, so wonderful game of football. We then followed it up with... Uh, Tuesday night. Oh, was it Tuesday or Wednesday? I can't remember now. Which is in the Bristol Street Motors Tuesday night thing, and it's the annoying side of it. It's all a bit annoying, isn't it? But the annoying side of that, which was it was a Spurs under twenty ones team. Yeah. Um, we put out a team of kind of moderate strength, obviously giving some of the younger lads opportunity to play. We uh, sent the Spurs back to where they came from, uh, i.e., London, with a. Uh, Flea in area by the name of Jake Richards free kick. So it was two nil result in the end, and the goal he scored was wonderful. That free kick was ridiculous. Yeah, it was. It just not only was it kind of you know a very just a very good fr- direct free kick goal. It didn't look like any free kick you ever see scored. Mm. It's just really strange. It's a left footer from the left hand side, so you'd never you know you'd normally put a right footer on that. Mm. You know. Um, he has almost no run up, mm. and then he just sort of spanks it into the top corner. Yeah, um, it sort of doesn't even look right, but it's yeah. incredible. I mean, that um, he's he is very good. Yeah, he's um, not yet signed his contract. No, nah, I think. Th- I mean, you know, the way. I mean, what we're going to get? We'll get. He'll go, and we'll get some sort of tribunal situation, yes. won't we? Like yes. maybe, maybe some. You know add-on kind of ones, sell, sell-on clauses and whatnot for the future. I think it depends. Possibly. I mean, maybe not, you know, but... Well, presumably he won't sign this year and you'll see what happens during the course of the rest of the season. It, I think it depends which club we interact with, doesn't it? Because, correct me if I'm wrong, when Criseni went to Villa, Taggy was very complimentary about how Villa dealt with it and it never went to tribunal. Yeah. Yeah, Whereas yeah I remember something about when that. Josh Key went to Swansea, dragged on forever. Yeah, I feel like Ampadu kind of was a bit of a drag on situation as well, wasn't it? Mm, I can't remember. But obviously, we you know did all right out at the end. But... Yeah, it's, so I think I think we'll definitely do all right out of it. It's kind of the speed of the thing, isn't it? Um, yeah. No, it kind of doesn't matter because there's this pipeline of there's still money coming in from other places. If Watkins gets his mega move this well, season, you know, or whatever. We're not getting any more from Watkins, are we? I think we always get 10% of what Brentford get. Oh, right, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so, if he hypothetically went to Bayern Munich for 70 million and Brentford get 7 million, then we get 700,000. Okay. Which is, anyway, that's all I'm saying is Richards could go to a club that deals honourably with us and it takes less time than a club that waits for it all to go through the courts, as it were. Yeah, okay. Anyway, uh, what a goal, what a goal. Yes. And uh, there were never going to be many people there to see it, but I'm pleased with the people who did get to see it because that was 
that was that was just reward for turning out on a uh, for one of those silly cup games. Absolutely. Then uh, less just reward for the three hundred and fifty people, four hundred people that went to Wigan. Yeah, which is as they say, a uh, long old poke. Yes, very far away. Uh, the big connection here being we've we talked about. Coldwell was their manager. And they've got Rankin and Ameson playing for him. Both of them started. Colbert was also their player and his mates that now their manager. Yeah, yeah. And all that as well, yeah. Um, boring. Uh, Is it really called the Brick Community Stadium? That's what they said, yeah. What? Well, you know, it's obviously some sort of community of bricks. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I mean... I mean, that's, I guess, Brick's the sponsor, but yeah. is your company really called Brick? I'm going to start a company, and I'm calling it Water. Yeah, I like it. What are you selling? Uh, internet solutions. Yeah, very good. Fluid. Fluid. It's what I'm getting. This is my in- instant reaction is fluidity. Yeah. You know. Uh, Nothing can stop us. Yep. Yeah. Uh, We're flooding the market. Love it. Okay. Anyway, that's stupid. Sort it out, lads. Give yourself a company a better name. Uh, anyway, we went there and... Yeah, not the best quality. I don't remember really many chances for either team. No. Um, this is the one, yeah, where... Uh... It was like a quality, wasn't it? It wasn't just a shut-up shop thing. No, no. I mean, you know, I think it's good. It's good. It's a good result. Yeah. No matter whether or not what the performance looked like or what it was like as a spectacle, it was a, you know, a clean sheet and a point It's forgotten away already, yeah. Against any team in... League One, yep, is is a positive, like not just a positive, like good, really Agreed. good. Agreed. Know? Um, it and I guess is a huge amount to say in the, about the match. I mean, it's just crap. But like, <laughs> the main thing right. was ranking. He did nothing, and when it came to it, the very last kick of the game, the, the kick, the very last touch of the game, yeah. was a Will Ameson header, which was really quite well saved. By Joe Whitworth, um, which is which he's been doing quite a lot of. Yeah, he's coming to his own, hasn't he? It's clean sheet. I mean, it's like more clean sheets than not. Yeah, I think, which is you know, which is just that's great. You know, regardless of I know he had that one howler didn't he, where it sort of bounced over his head or whatever. Yeah, um, and one he, went kind of under his body, didn't it? But he's I think he's more than made up for that already. Yeah. Um, we just, we're trying to reserve judgment on on his height, weren't we? And and none of these saves we're mentioning are anything to do with that, really. Um, they're not ones where the you know the opposition are kind of putting a load of corners like right on right underneath his crossbar or anything. But in terms of like he's kept us in, he's kept us in. He's got us points twice this week at least, you know. And then um, that was a great save, and to deny. Um, Ameson, the jug-eared, ex-Argyle, sort of miserable git, uh, the satisfaction of scoring the last-minute winner against us, yeah. is worth you know at least a foot in height for Joe Whitworth, if you ask me. Well, absolutely. Maybe he's grown as a result of that. Uh... He's grown in my mind. Yeah, well, fair enough. Um, so he didn't he didn't play in the Spurs game. It was Sean McDonald, everyone's favourite cheeky chappy. Yeah, he is a cheeky chappy. He is a yeah. cheeky chappy. But that's four clean sheets under Whitworth. Yeah, superb. Mm. Uh five in total. Not so, just down to Whitworth, of course. No, no. It's down to like the kind of like the sort of excellent sort of defending on the whole. We did talk about a couple weeks ago where they had like an off day, didn't they? All the defence seemed to have that I can't remember who it was against, someone when we lost. Did we lose? Anyway. Was it Blackpool? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah of course, that one. Yeah. But other than that, I think Kramer and John Lee and Sweens has yeah. just been this kind of like, like brilliant yeah. kind of That's back, a hell of a setup, three. isn't it? Yeah. And that's not, we'll come on to, the, I think maybe it's more relevant to the Leighton Orient game last night, but also, um, I guess we'll come around to the at least partial redemption of Ilmari Niskanen. We will. Okay, so let's talk about that. So then last night was... Yeah, we're rattling through it, aren't we? But I think, you know, I think we've covered everything we need to cover. Yeah. Well, last night was like late or in a way. A favourite trip for City supporters, particularly London-based ones. 
Yeah, well, a lot of people move from Exeter to London, don't they? Understandably, yeah. um, if you like that kind of thing. Yeah, and they they they're always grateful when the, the Grecians turn up in their town. Are they? Aren't they? Well, what, what makes you say that? Well, because they're from Exeter and they're pleased to see their Exeter City team. Oh, turn sorry, up in I thought you meant sort of Londoners were pleased to see people from Exeter. No, turn up in no, their no, town. no. Exeter right. exiles are pleased when Exeter City comes. Oh, to London. yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. Um, so it was. Well, it's it was a two-nil win. Yes. Another clean sheet. No, it wasn't. It was a one-nil win. Sorry, uh, one-nil one win, win. Another clean sheet. Uh, a bit hangy onny at the end, if that's a phrase. Yeah. But we did it very nicely, and Niskanen was the architect. Well, yeah, he was. I mean, if you could put, um, like I said, didn't actually watch it, so or listen to it, so you know the. The fine details may be a bit lost here, but if you're talking about the goal, which I suppose we will, Niskanen's, if he had that kind of end product all the time, yep. he would be, he'd be, you know, probably playing for a better team than us. Well, that's you know? his, because that's his, his, his industry piece, is kind of like, you know, second to none. You'd never seen an engine like it. And his know? passing's really improved. Like we said with that goal, um, uh, uh, Kamari, pa- Kamari Doyle's goal I still say his passing's like yeah there's, there's been moments I still say his passing is kind of suspect well, um, at times yeah yeah like it's not like he's not Woods or no. Francis or, or any of those guys you know or Sweeney he's, he's not as good at passing but at least we've seen some kind of you know uh, you know good end product from him and the cross for the goal yeah is and absolutely... there was one directly before yes that's thing. right yeah for the chance yeah uh, it's unbelievable. It's like sumptuous. Yeah. The ball cut to the back post. From from a long way out. Long yeah. way back, you know. Uh, McGinnis. And also, we're in the business of grinding out, you know, nil-nil is away from home mm. and grinding out, you know, getting one-nils and then hanging on to them and stuff when we're away. Like That's just the nature of the kind of level of team we are. And, like, you can't... You need players like him. Um, You know, said it loads of times as much as we've criticised him for things we've also always praised him for that and um brilliant mm. brilliant but what a pass yeah what a cross yeah and then McGinnis does that thing that we always hope he does that we know is his strength he yeah strong rises up oh, exactly what you want back post header back across the, and then and then is first, it going in nah first goal for Amani Richards yeah who's on loan from Leicester and he is kind of you know well, he's getting more game time well, as well, remembering isn't he? that. Yeah, he is. and um, It's quite a squad, actually, that Caldwell's got there, isn't it? You well, know, yeah, like... but bear in mind as well that you've got still got Mitchell out injured and you've got this other fella, a name I can never remember because we haven't seen him yet. Who's that? Pat Jones. Oh, yeah. He's out for ages. So, like, or yeah. something, I think. So, Richards is getting this chance, uh, you know, in, in that under that situation. Uh, and um, great movement to get on the end of that... Uh, header back across goal yeah. to anticipate that was really clever um, uh, and also benefited from his marker completely taking his eye off him so he was all on his own I mean it's terrible defending that but kind of the defending that you can expect maybe in like League One you know some some of the time you know and he, but he capitalised on it and it's you know he's you can't fault him he's just perfect positioning you know? yeah it really is um, I just feel like Gary's built up this Last year, we were like, you know, who can he even bring on here? You remember? Like, yeah, yeah. And now you think, like, Ali didn't start this game. Richard started instead. Um, Doyle started, but then Caleb Watts comes on for him. More on that later. Francis goes off for Carriol, who's obviously... We haven't even a... mentioned him, by the way, have we? H- have we not? Well, I don't know. Maybe not. Anyway, if we haven't mentioned him... No, we haven't, because he signed while I was away. I think. Okay, yeah. So, um, a free agent, Mustafa Carriol... He was at Burton or something. Wasn't he was at Burton he? last year. He's got he played a lot of games for Middlesbrough in the Championship before a long injury. Yeah. Um, he looks really good. He's come in as a short term, hasn't he? I, I guess to sort of plug again that same gap I was talking about with those injuries. Well, if you remember, that's the Wildshut scenario from a year ago. Yeah. He looks streets ahead of Wildshut from a year ago. Yeah. Well, Wildshut came in and looked like. I mean, he improved over time yes. and, and unfortunately got injured at a time where he was actually kind of looking his best pre-season. But yeah, I, yeah, yeah, he does look ready. He looks a bit more ready to go, doesn't he? He does. He does. Uh, Sonny Cox obviously keeps coming off the bench. Um, 
there's players like Fitzwater and Purrington who we we see Purrington. He comes on and does 20 minutes, but that's a good player that isn't getting a look in at the moment. I think, oh, this is actually, there's some depth to this squad yeah. in some positions. I actually hadn't thought about it, but yeah, there is decent, there is some decent depth there. And some yeah. options, yeah. you know. And I know McGuinness is mainly, mainly starting, but almost all of the others, maybe excluding Niskanen, are, are um, being rotated, aren't they? Well, I'd say not so much the back three. That seems no, pretty... not the back three, sorry, yeah, yeah. of the midfield and, and forwards. Yeah. Um, anyway, Gary was delighted Oh, well, let's finish with this. So then we hung on, didn't we, second half? Uh, the final straw, which being Watts getting sent off yeah. for a scything chat. I didn't think it was a red, to be honest. Well, doesn't he do another one just he does one a just minute before. before? The ref plays an advantage and then he comes and just kind of like boots the guy from yeah. behind. And yeah. I think the ref just like, mate, yeah. you're up. He's only been on for 20 minutes at that point. Yeah. Um, straight red. Yeah, a straight red seems a little harsh, but, uh, you know, I don't think we'll contest it do you think really what he's done there is got two yellows from two very similar tackle as you know in the ref's Almost mind possibly yeah. yeah and and in a way i don't even mind those being red because it's such a cynical professional foul that i kind of of sort of of the opinion that those those ones should be red they're, they're usually yellows yeah you know they're kind of like i know what i'm doing here i'm taking him out because it's my only option kind of thing um Get sent off. Yeah. I mean, that's what we want from play. Uh, not to get the red, and it was a bit violent. <laughs> but there have been times in the past where we're like, just bring him down. You know, this is ninety three minutes. He ended up playing ninety seven or ninety eight, didn't we? Yeah. And you're like, just bring him down. So what's he's doing? What? Yeah. Kind of needs what, to whatever be doing. it takes to get the result, I think is that is a, is is the mentality there, and I'm happy with that. I'm happy yeah. with that, yeah. and I imagine Colwell's happy with that too, even if he doesn't say it out loud. Um, I mean, you don't know how much we're going to see of Caleb Watts. He's a bit of a utility man in it, and it may well end up being one of his kind of like key contributions yeah, yeah. for the season. Yeah, because, yeah. But you know, like, yeah, I'm fine with it. There's all, there's this whole um, kind of, like, I suppose, mostly X Web kind of generated narrative that in the past we've been the kind of nice guy guys. Yeah. Um, and that's not just all generated from there. That's kind of, you know, you see where that kind of idea comes from. It's, it's Tisdale, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Kind of thing. Like, we do this the right way. You yeah. Know, like, kind of thing. Yeah. And, and we don't do that anymore. <laughs> no. No, <laughs> no, but no one else does. Point. No, I know. And I'm fine with it. Yeah. I, I'm kind of like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm embracing being one of the, the the teams that, like everyone else, you know, there's there's the thing what we've been doing it sort of every week every match now we fake an injury to joe whitworth yeah about 20 30 minutes in or some point during the match so coldwell can tell him like right this is working this isn't we'll bring them all over give them some little we're basically having a little early half time yeah but um, we've needed it on several occasions haven't we? i, I wonder worked. how long we can keep getting away with it but i suppose well, always, whitworth, because what, what, what can you, you do? do yeah the keeper's gone down what can, yeah it's and it's uh, it is cynical, and it is kind of a uh, it's, it's very much uh, gamesmanship or dark arts, whatever you want to call it. But it's um, it, it's, it's a loophole that there's not much you can do about if you're an official. Yeah. He didn't need to do it in the Stevenage game. It didn't happen. Uh, he was we were so in control of it. We didn't need our extra half time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't mention this. Uh, my favorite thing about Coldwell, aside from all the stuff that we all love, is watching him when Melenic Alley's got the ball. Because that is a man for whom the term apoplexy <laughs> was invented. It drives him absolutely spare. Well, Gary, you bought him, mate. And you must have known what you were getting. Colwell is someone who wants to kind of like man, uh, uh, micromanage matches yeah. like within an inch of their lives. Yeah. I mean, he's a details guy. He's, got, he's down that kind of direction of like modern coaches. And yeah, and Ali... Will not be, you know, contained. No, he he, will he's just going to do what he wants. He is. So Coldwell just constantly just like scream. He's screaming at everyone all the time, but that is different. Yeah. I Did you see? recommend watching him well, oh, any time Ali's got the ball. Do you remember when Sky went through a phase of one camera on a player and you could select which player? Yeah, player watch. cam, yeah. Player cam, oh yeah. Uh, well, you'd want to see it for Gary when Ali's got the ball. My favourite bit about the Stevenage game was Ali gets himself into a really good position and he could, he's in the six yard box. And he, it's a bit of an angle. It's a similar angle to Kamari Doyle uh, earlier in the game. And he, but he's got an option. He could square it. And he thinks, no, no. I'll use all the power in the world to take the goalkeeper's head off. <laughs> It'll be a flaming wreck. Which he does do. But he gets his directional button wrong. 
And I'd imagine that ball is still traveling somewhere over the University Hill because it was insanely overhit. Yeah. Anyway, Gary went the color of, uh, you know, purple. The, the color of heather, Scottish thistles. <laughs> he did. He went the color of the uh, Scotland rugby shirt. Um, what color? Was, the, oh, you know, it was like purpley blue. It was, it was it. quite the sight. I don't anyway, follow rugby. Um, Gary I was hate delighted. Anyone who does. He, Gary was delighted with the performance last night. Delighted. Yeah. Well, I'm not surprised. No, it's incredible. Um, fair play to them all. So uh, that Dan is seven points from a potential nine. Yeah, that's really very good. Uh, isn't it? It really is. And what we're tenth now? I we're think we're tenth with a game in hand over some of the teams above us. Um, yeah. So we've got. Well, we're looking thirteen good. points. I know. Days. At this point last season, we were also looking good, and we all know how that went. Well, no. By this point last season, we'd already dropped off. Have we? Yeah, yeah. August was the good bit. End yeah, of August, okay, we're top yeah. of the league. Oh, pretty much. We're October now, pretty much, aren't we? Or yeah. are we even actually in October? Yeah, so eight games. Oh, we are. Second October. 13 points. My rent's due. Oh, pay up. Not, it's not to me. I'm not your landlord. Like, imagine if that was the twist at the end of this podcast. But you're my landlord. Yeah. And, and I'm would... doing this kind of like... Yeah, a bit of rent Under off. duress. <laughs> that would be a twist. No one would expect that. Um, sounds a bit sexual. It's not. Well, what does it? Doesn't it? Landlords getting tenants to... Not to me. Yeah, I've, right. I've... Yeah. Well, none of that's going on. So don't okay, yeah, yeah, don't worry about don't it. Don't worry yeah. about it, everyone. Uh, anyway, we are plus three in the goals and we are uh, 13 points up after eight games. So uh, I know the story is uh, what's happening at the top. It's not quite the story they were hoping for, is it? Birmingham are running away with it. Uh, 22 points, whereas Wrexham are... You know, seventeen points in second, but it's not it's yeah. not the Hollywood narrative yet. Good. Good. All right, well there's lots coming up, so more on that in a second. Welcome back to the Big Bank Theory podcast. You can email us bigbankpod at gmail dot com at Big Bank Pod on Twitter and we're on Facebook as well. Um, Don't bother doing the Twitter. I can't even be asked to look at it. Oh, I just email us. Bigbankpod at yeah. gmail.com. I'll yeah. stop saying to us, shall I? Yeah. I mean, it is there, but, uh, you know, right. I'm not checking it. Fair dues. Uh, did you know Elon Musk got rich off PayPal? I never realised that. Yeah, well, that's what he originally wanted to call X, wasn't it? He? he wanted to change the name of PayPal to X. Oh. And then he was kind of... Because um, of SpaceX and... I don't know. Yeah, but then that's anyway. his thing, isn't it? Like he puts X on things, right? But they, anyway, I think he got kind of ousted out of PayPal anyway, and they they, oh, they, right. they didn't want to call it X anyway. Got Musk, oh, well, I mean, obviously, he really got rich, rich out of those father's diamond mines, well, that, didn't he? So that will help, won't it? That will help. Yeah, good start, uh, scumbag. Talking of good starts, talking of scumbags, Cambridge United. They still got that terrible sponsor, Mick George. Um, that's Peterborough. Isn't it's it? both of them. Is it? Yeah. Anyway, uh, we have started well, or we've certainly had a really good run. I'm beating in four. And Cambridge, less so. Oh, yeah. Where are they? I believe, they up to? Dan, they're bottom with one point and minus ten goals. They are. What's happened there? Uh, they're not played very well. I, I don't really know. That will do it. They've lost... Well, the our next five. two matches, in fact, are Cambridge at home and Shrewsbury away, which is the bottom two. Yep. Um, so that is... Uh, well... Nice. Well, I'm looking forward to the, uh, Saturday now, knowing that. <laughs> well, you would do, yeah. Haven't been to St. James Park for ages, so... Um, they... Uh, I mean... What to say about them, really? Cause it's just been poor... Low scoring defeats, right? And and they're not scoring, so and it's hard to know, isn't it? It's weird how this stuff happens. I think we can ex- we can almost kind of expect to win, can't we? Look at the well, form. Look We're at the form. Home. Look at the you know like um, they lost quite a lot of their good players. I you know I don't recognise any of the names from previous. I mean, seasons. Uh, not maybe. Well, yeah, expect to win. I definitely expect to be you know 
I mean, given what we did against Stevenage and against Leighton Orient last night, we should be looking for... Given the, the, the whole season so far, yeah. we, should be, we should be comfortably winning this. Yeah. Obviously, if we were to lose this game, I think that would be, you know... Would be surprised. That would be bad. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, good. Um, I, think he's got, I think he's brought out some real consistency in us. I think, um, like I said, there's kind of, like you've said, there's a kind of a solidity at the back and in the kind of spine, the woods kind of role. Uh, yeah, not to mention as well, like another kind of ever present this season, Jack McMillan. Yeah, who kind of quietly goes about doing his business. Like I know, I kind of said like there was a time when he played on the left wing, and I think he's done a bit more of that, and it wasn't exactly sparkling going forward. But I think as long as you've got, as long as you're firing elsewhere, um, I'm not questioning it anymore because you know the results are kind of speaking for themselves, and I think he's kind of hardly really put a foot wrong, especially. Um, kind of defensively and in terms of kind of keeping things ticking over. Mm-hmm. Um, and it looks like, an, look, looking like another smart signing, uh, McMillan, you know, and that was the first one we got in the season. Uh, yeah, it was, wasn't season, it? And he's kind of a kind of, like we've said, you, uh, no one, you can't really picture his face in your mind's eye because he's a very kind of, he's kind of like a default FIFA creator player, <laughs> isn't he? you know, like, and... But, you know, he's worth kind of keeping an eye on. Not keeping an eye on, but if you're interested to kind of just watch someone and kind of like, just kind of like be a kind of very kind of effective cog in a in a, in a, in a wheel or yep. a machine, then it, um, he's done a really kind of quietly good job. Yeah. Um, I mean, not, obviously, I, there's going to be other players around him. Francis is banging in free kicks and scoring kind of goals around the corner. Ryan Woods has got so much of the ball and he's kind of, you know, all this kind of thing. Um, Niskanen obviously is this kind of wild man of Finland. Yeah. Um, and but McMillan's kind of like going to, he's not particularly eye-catching, but yeah. if you, I think if you kind of watch him closely, it's kind of like, you know, I think he's been a big part of how well we've done so far. It's, um, I think there's also a real testament to those back three, the three centre-backs. And when you think about it now... Even at the time, even when it was going okay, the way our back three played last season was maddening, wasn't it? The the, the always oh, the it's not part. like that anymore. It's not like that anymore. And That's... John Lee and Crammer and Sweeney, as we know, very happy to move forwards. I think that I mean you've just it's just, it's just natural progression, I suppose, because it's just the people that it's just the personnel. Yeah, Coldwell's got the team now, and I know it's the you, the argument you could make this is that some of these people are only here for a short amount of time, so it's a, you know like not particularly kind of forward planning, but they fit now the way you really want to play. Having Will Ameson as the kind of main who else played centre back there last year? I know Czech, but he wasn't really. Was, who was the other one? Uh... Anyway, it doesn't matter, but they weren't really, especially Ameson, was not somebody you'd think of as kind of like a ball-playing centre-back, is he? Do you no, mean no. Or someone who's like, I know he had the odd kind of foray forward, but he's not someone you want carrying the ball out of defence or kind of knocking it around, whereas Kramer and and Efeko just look like players who have just always done that, you know, because they probably have, you know. They're younger, they're from kind of bigger academies. Yeah. Um they um, didn't learn their trade at Plymouth Argyle, for example. I mean, Efeko could still be our pl- like. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's a possible. Yeah, there's, that's that's possible. Isn't no, it? I absolutely hear what you're saying, but it's just looked like. It's just looked like a complete yeah. shift of mindset. It just looks it? like now we have. It's like before we didn't have the personnel. Yeah. What we were trying to do it anyway, which which was part of times kind of like really infuriating last yeah. season, because you end up. Just knocking it keeper to Ameson to cross the back, you know, like just, and it was like kind of unbearable to watch, you know. It's not like that now. These players, they know what to do. They they, they know how to play this way. They're comfortable playing this way. It's a lot better to watch, mm. even from a you know. A, um, Zach Jules was one of the defenders. Zach Jules as well. Even him, I don't think is quite as much of a kind of like. No, he's not. He was good possession player, guy but... as 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 those two. You know? Yeah. Fitzwater played there a bit. And Sweeney, you have to 
discredit him as adapted, whether he's, or not he's he always. Ca- he he kind of feels like he's from a different era of football. Yeah, even though he's only just turned thirty, he feels like he's kind of from like the kind of when football even like, looked different. You yeah, know? like and but he has managed to adapt to play, and he's always been good on the ball, but to play, he's kind of like. He starts every game, you yeah. know. There's no. It's almost like his, his position in the in the in the starting eleven is an under question, and fair play. He's been excellent, and he he's adapted to play that way. He can he can do it. He's brave. He he is progressive with the ball. He's good on the ball. You can trust him with it, you know. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, great. Um, Hartridge is one of the others, of course. Hartridge again, not a man. You know, from the Johan Cruyff kind no. of mould of football. No, no. Know. Anyway, it's been, it's been brilliant and I hope, I'd expect us to show that consistency again on Saturday and get, and get a good result. Oh, we're going to batter them. Hope so. Yeah. Then we've got a weird anomaly uh, of no game on the, no game midweek after that and then no game on the following Saturday, another international break. Yeah. So Mansfield at home is off. And then we have got an evening game the following week, but it's not till the Thursday. Yeah, again, Sky, isn't it? And that's Shrewsbury. And then there's no Saturday game. And then there's Tuesday at home, Reading. Yeah, this season. And this is all, this is because, of, I know it's, there's the international things as well, but because of this Sky deal now, yeah. there's just the first two months or whatever of this season, and, and well, it'll be three months by the time this is done, it just they've just felt bizarre. Yeah, yeah. Like, and the games seem to be just. I know they're not quite, but it just seems to be at random times. Yeah. Oh, it to does. To the point where you're kind of like, I don't know when it is, and I'm missing stuff because I'm because it's not when you're used to doing it, and it's yeah. sort of like what. It's really unhelpful. I've had to honestly, I've had to print off for the first time ever, print off the fixture list, you know, the one that club produces, and stick it on my wall at work because otherwise I'm like, I'm just going to not know something's happening, you know. Yeah. Anyway, there it is. It is what it is. At least we can enjoy the football. In the well, midst of... Well, you can if you can make it to it, or if you're not doing something else already, well, know. you know. Indeed. indeed. Okay. Um, that, I think, is our business. I think so, yeah. So we're not, we'll are not. we do one next week. We'll do one after Cambridge. Yeah. Uh, we'll celebrate those six goals. I'd love to see an absolute thumping. We haven't thumped anyone yet, have we? We'd like to see McGuinness get a few, wouldn't we? He, uh, yeah, hasn't got... He hasn't, hasn't scored got... yet, has he? I think he's playing brilliantly. I think he's doing well... Most of the time, I think he's doing exactly what we're asking him to do. I like it when he's. I don't. I'm not. I'm not been a big fan of him and Ali at the no, same time. I'd agree with that. Um, but yeah, uh, I would like to see him get a goal. Um, Having said that, they were together for Stevenage, and it I worked. I wouldn't mind seeing this. I think Niskanen. I think Niskanen deserves a goal, doesn't he? Doesn't he just? I mean, he very nearly scored last night. Yeah. It kind of got cleared off the line sort of twice, and then um, Doyle tried an overhead kick, which tipped over. But I, yeah, I think he's. I think he's earned it, and I think. I think the reaction to him scoring at St. James Park would be very, yes. uh, very good. Very pleasing. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's hope it happens. But I don't mind any of them score, to be honest. Any of the boys. Love it. All right. Jack McMillan. Get on the score sheet. Has he scored? No. No. Yeah. All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. My name's John. I've been here with my friend and colleague, Dan. Cheers. See you soon. <laughs>